Welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clemenson, and if you're a recruiter out on your own or just lacking general guidance or mentorship, uh, then you've come to the right place. Our To The Point episodes are designed to give you the motivation, advice, and strategies you need to succeed as a lone recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now today, I want to talk about virtual assistants, and we've all heard of them, we've all entertained the idea of using them in recruitment, and um, I think the, the number one thing I see with individuals when they when they come to me and we talk about that is what's the best way to use them. So we've, we've got four um, over in the Philippines, and I think they're fantastic. We use them for various things. Um, a little bit of trial and error on, on the best way to use them, um, and what I want to do today is walk you through how we use them. It's not going to take long, and I think what to expect out of them um, I can look. I can tell you now from experience, they're totally worth it. They really are. Um, I think they're a different offering to maybe what some of those new AI tools are that are coming out. There's a lot of automation. There's a lot of tech that's coming out that might replace a little bit of that repetitive um, work that you might get a VA to do. But for me, there's there's nothing that quite beats a human touch on on certain tasks and a discerning eye. Um, and so for us, there's still a lot of value that we can see out of them. So I'll walk you through what I think are the best best ways to use them. And, and obviously, you can do it for yourself. I guess where I start where, with it is, I think in recruitment, perfection can be the killer of deals, right? If we strive for too much perfection, we can actually miss things or we actually get caught up on things that just take up too much time. And I think time is the element here that VAs can really help us with. We are very short on time, um, not just in recruitment, just in general, but that, you know, if we have more time, we can we can attack more roles. If we can attack more roles, we can make more placements, right? So you've got to view a VA as they can create you a lot of time. They can take a lot of legwork out of some pretty ordinary tasks that you do from day to day. Um, so for us, what have we got? One, we've got about eight things that I get them to do every week, um, and, it, and it might dial up and down depending on the task at the moment. So the first thing I'll do is emails. Well, we get a lot of emails from clients, candidates, providers, whatever it might be, um, I, I get my VA to just sort them. So they might have some that d- just need to be filed away. You know, it, you know, give them, they know what a good candidate looks like, so they'll be able to do an email back if, it, if they're no good. Um, you may not want them doing any client-facing or candidate-facing work, but if you get a good one, you'll know they can probably do it. Um, and then obviously flagging urgent ones. In my, in my job, I struggle so hard to get to my emails. The amount of calls podcasting, um, people I've got to speak to. Um, by the t- Emails is so low down on my list. It shouldn't be. I'm always glancing, but I found that using a VA was great because they will let me know if something urgent has come in. Um, second one is, and it, there is a lot of automation around this, but you know, I might interview someone and simply putting them into the database can, can be five minutes. And I, I, I'm very quick to just flick them what I've written up and they'll put them in the database and categorize them for me. I love that. Um, and then I guess that couples with my third one, which is they're doing database searches for me. So I'll have them on Seek. I'll have them on Indeed. They're looking at those CV databases. Anyone good that looks um, like we want to be speaking to them, I will. I'll, they'll send me an email with a list of all the people that they picked out. I'll say, oh, I'll speak to those ones. But the rest they can then put into Bullhorn as well. So I get them to do that kind of legwork stuff. Um if I get a job that comes in and it's, you know, it's slightly out of, um, I guess, where I've done a lot of work, so a LinkedIn project, so putting something together, let's say a role comes in in Sydney and it's a senior level such and such, um, if I haven't already got that project done, I'll get them to do it. And so what I actually do is I pull up LinkedIn from my end and I do the, the initial search with them and I show them what the criteria is. It might have about a long list of a 1,000 people. We all know that they're not going to be a 1,000 people suitable for the role. It's probably going to be a 100 or so. Um, so I get them to dwindle it down into the project for me. And then from there, I just I tweak it. So um, I think the key is with that one as well and, and all those all those tasks that I've already mentioned so far is that I only expect them to get it to about 80% of to where I need it, right? If, you, if you're looking for perfection out of them, I think that's where you're going to fall short. I think that's where a lot of people struggle with VAs. You're going, oh, they're not perfect. You've got to remember, if you're using a VA, you're paying them a much lower rate. So 
if your expectation is to get about 80% of what you want done, no one's going to know what you know. No one's going to you know, be able to see what you see in your market and how you recruit. They're just not, right? It's why, it's why you're recruiting. It's why you're in the market. It's why you're good at what you do. Just get them to take that 80% of legwork out of your day and you're going to just – you're going to find so much more time in your day. You're going to find so much more time to attack the things that are, that are high value. And um, you're going to be able to get through more and feel less stressed. It's a, it's, it's a good outcome. Um, so what else do I do? Um, I'll get them to identify jobs. So they control LinkedIn, Seek, and all those places. And they can look for clients or even new clients that are advertising within our space. And I get them to email templates out, which go, hey, this is what we do. This is how we can help. Um, even onboarding new staff, we're going through a big hiring um, phase at the moment and getting them to onboard, just even setting up IT systems, you know, um, emails, getting their new licenses in place for LinkedIn and Bullhorn and the likes of, um, getting their whatever they need, um, templates sent out to them, um, access to our um, cloud storage, all that stuff. I just get them to do it. It's not hard. It's not hard for me to do, but it's time I don't want to be spent doing it. Um Another big one you can do is get them trained up on on loading and scheduling your ads. We we have some VAs that are that are good at writing ads, but um, I think ads are a pretty personal thing. Like no one's you're getting the brief, right? So you're gonna know that spec a lot better than anyone else. And by the time you explain the role, you may as well have written that ad for yourself. But if you can write that ad uh, and then give it to them to load up on the various places, your website. Um, or your company's website, um, you know, Seek, LinkedIn, or wherever you want to put those ads, great. I think they, they're useful for that. Um, and look, and the last thing that we kind of, you know, big part of what we're using them for is finding recruitment discussion trends, um, you know, or themes or topics um, for, for article ideas. We've got a content writer here who does a lot of our articles and writes a lot of news briefs and, and whatnot. Um, but for an individual like you, it might not be that. It might just be your individual posts and things that, that you're seeing. And if you get on this track of posting every day, which, which I like to do, sometimes you do struggle to find content. So when you've got someone feeding you ideas all the time, just and they might just be following certain individuals on LinkedIn or certain profiles within recruitment, um, of voices, and if they're just putting you know, a couple of topic ideas into the mix, it can be really helpful because, again, like writing posts isn't hard. It's coming up with a with a, a valuable sort of um, idea sometimes. So that's it. Eight eight ideas that I use um, for a VA, and you know, I think if you can get a good VA, hold on to them. They're worth their weight in gold, and I hope that helped someone today. Um, that's all we have time for you today. I hope you enjoyed that one. If you haven't already, join our mailing list, subscribe, um, follow us on LinkedIn. It really helps us grow. We're really trying to push this thing out. We love watching this community grow. We're having a great time doing this. So get on board, tell your friends, share it, do what you can. We love it. Um, if you've got any value out of today's episode, um, give us a shout, sh- drop us a line, drop us a text. If you've got any other ideas of how you might use a VA, I'd love to learn. Let me know. Let the community know. Um, that's it. Have an amazing day. And as always, may all your deals come true.